Hi and welcome. This tutorial is for those of you who have purchased our stylized photo pendant bundle and I'm going to show you how to insert your own images. Now if you just downloaded the pendant bundle it should be in your download folders and just make sure that your file has been unzipped and that all of your files have been extracted. For this tutorial I'm using Photoshop Elements and if you don't have Photoshop I'll post a link below for a free trial and then you can play around with it and decide whether it's right for you. If you don't have Photoshop just keep in mind that this process won't be exactly the same as your own editing software but it should be similar enough that you can still take what I'm going to show you here and use it with the editing software that you have. So first I'm going to start with the easiest file to work with. So what we want to do first is to make a duplicate copy of the master so that we don't accidentally make changes to the master file. So go file, duplicate, and then name your file. And you want to name your file something that someone is searching for online so that you have a better chance of being seen in the Google search, especially when someone is searching images. So I'm going to call this one round galaxy pendant. And now you can go ahead and close off that master file. So these are really large files and now you're going to resize it down for website use. So you can go to image, resize, image size, and then this box will come up. And we're going to change this to 1500. Okay, so that's the file that we're going to work with. It's ready to go. Now we are going to find the image that we want to insert into this pendant mockup. So go file, open, and find your file whatever folder that you have it stored in. And then you're going to take your elliptical tool and make sure that it's on the round setting and you're going to cut out and paste it into the mockup. Now take your move tool and shrink it down to fit. So that looks nice, but now we'll make it even better by adding a glass top. So to do this, make sure that the right layer is selected and then go to styles and you can see that you have a drop down list and pick glass buttons and then pick translucent glass. Now go to the FX button and we'll play around with those settings to make it look even more real. And you want to really pay attention to where the light is coming from so that you put your shadows and highlights in the right places so that you can see that my shadow is right there, so I'm going to make sure that the light is coming from the opposite direction. Now that looks great, and now I'm going to flatten my image, and this is going to make all the layers into one layer, so that we can add the final touch. So go Layer, Flatten Image. And now the final step is to take your eraser tool, and we're just going to put in some more smaller highlights on the opposite side to make it look like the light is shining through the glass. And you want to do this really subtle, don't go overboard. And if you make any mistakes, just go undo eraser. So that looks really great now. So now just save your file and you can save as a JPEG or PNG. I tend to save files as a JPEG when there's no words added. And if I have words or a logo added, then I'll save it as a PNG so everything is nice and clear. Okay, so now we're ready for the next image and this one is going to be a little bit more difficult. I'll work with this one here. It has a side view, so you're going to use a little bit of a different technique for this one and do the exact same thing by saving a copy of your master and this time I'm going to name this one but first coffee pendant and then I'm going to resize it and it's ready to go. Okay so some of you might have a jewelry sheet that looks like this and this is a sheet that I made up to make one inch round pendants and I'm going to zoom this sheet in a little bit more so I can grab one of the circles so it's the same as the last one. You just take your elliptical tool and grab the image and this might take some practice to get it just right. And then go edit, cut, and paste. So now take your move tool and move it around until it fits perfectly into the tray. 
and then go to image transform distort and this is going to fit that image right in there and then play around with it until it gets perfect and when it looks good then you can add on your glass button and then do the exactly the same thing as the last one by adjusting the shadows and the highlights and when that's finished then you can paste the next three into your image And you can see that this one is more on an angle, so I'm going to have to change the perspective of this one. So go to Image, Transform, and Perspective. And just keep playing with those until they look right. These don't have to be totally perfect because they're going to be completely blurred out. So these are in the background and they're just way too bright. So I'm going to adjust the brightness setting on each of these by going to Enhance, Adjust Lighting, Brightness and Contrast. And then I'll put the transparent glass on each one. Now flatten the image and then go to your blur tool and completely blur them out. That looks great. And then save it and you are good to go to your next image. So with this image I did the exact same process and these images with the large spaces are for words. So if you're having a sale or want to tell your customers an important message, there is lots of room here for words and your logo. And the only thing different is that when you add words, you're going to save the file as a PNG, and this will give you a nice clear image. Well, that concludes this tutorial, and if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below, and we'll do our best to answer them. Till next time, take care. <laughs>